Spencer, you're you're uh you know DC native man. I'm gonna go get with my man Bang. Spent a lot of time in DC. Uh, yeah. you know for you know first time we're gonna go over. Yeah, shouts out to Radio One DC, um, ninety three point nine WKYS, Magic one hundred two point three, ninety two point seven, Real Sign of DMV, and all of those stations. I also um spent a little time when we had brought W um TEM, um, and you know working with a lot of those guys over there. Um, and, you know, having conversations about sports and stuff and, um, like hearing all of the stuff that's going on out there in, in DC, um, in the district about the Wizards and the Caps moving to, uh, Potomac Yards over there in Northern <laughs> Virginia. Like, is this a, is this really going to happen or is folks just talking to try to leverage Mayor Bowser to try to give up the money that they need, um, uh, to do what they need to do in the district? A couple of things at play here. The folks that are talking are Theodore Leontis himself. So you can't just say folks in that regard because the guy owns both teams, yeah. including the Mystics, by the way, which is another um, discussion in this that we'll get to later. But um, I mean, I think it's about as real as Ted wants it to be, which is I don't f- frankly think is that real, but I do think there's a bluff call element to this. And if I was the city, I would call their bluff. I'd lock the doors. Tony Kornheiser talked about that a little bit on PTI, and you guys might have heard me ranting about it yesterday about how this is kind of a despicable move. But there's this thing that happens that I'm never going to understand, which is that when an owner acts like they need something, all of a sudden people have this bizarre desire to acquiesce to the most vicious capitalist we know and be like, well, he should be allowed to do whatever he wants. He's the one who brought the team or whatever. And you're like, hold on a second. Are you rooting for a guy to make money or are you rooting for a fan experience that you're going to enjoy? Because let me tell you something. Often they are mutually exclusive and everybody's kind of convinced themselves that for whatever reason, a franchise raking in more cash gets you closer to whatever proverbial promised land that you're looking for. And this is one of those cases where I just there's just no world where I could see anybody defending them leaving downtown DC. There just isn't one. I mean, I get it. If you're brainwashed by society to the point that you think that anybody who's got enough money should basically be allowed to run rampant over any sort of societal, I don't want to say moral imperatives, but you know, public trust, then yeah. But for the most part, never trust the billionaire, man. You're not going to get rich. You'll never be in that position. You don't have to worry about defending that class. Trust me, Joe Blow from Bowie, who doesn't know, <laughs> you know, a left tackle from a right guard. Like, it's just, it doesn't make sense to me. And I think a lot of people, out of what they feel is some sort of loyalty to their own team, don't understand how easy it is to be sort of played as a pawn being a fan of American sports. And I mean that for any city. But in D.C., it's got a particular flavor because of where basketball you know, as a sport in the town and the way that that franchise has been so terrible for literally my entire life. So it's a weird situation, yeah. but it's not an easy one at all. Yeah. Cause that's why I was going to ask next, like, do the people really care? I remember being, you know, talking to the guys and I mean, of course it's always Redskins slash commanders first, then it's caps. And for me coming from Chicago and moving out to DC, you know, I mean, I know bears is King out here and then you got the Cubs and all of that stuff. But we still love our Bulls, you know, and if if somebody tried to move them from the west side of Chicago, I think everybody would riot, even though it's like dangerous as hell where the Bulls play. So, like, do the people really care about the Wizards staying in that area? What the Wizards represent is basketball in the area. And look, I mean, they've never won 50 games in my life. So what people care about, by definition, does not look the same way that it does for other NBA franchises. DC is a basketball town. Wizards aside, we turn out more pros, college players, men and women. Um, Shouts out to PG County. You know what I'm saying? In terms of the area, the metro area, than a lot of other big cities and people don't realize that. So what the Wizards represent, Never don't forget the Hoyas play there too. Um, What the Wizards represent is this sort of mecca of basketball as a sport in general. Them being competitive is not really something people have worried about because, hello, that guy is on the team for so long and everybody knows he's not serious. But that's a different matter than saying that, well, people don't care enough to show up, therefore removing them from where they are makes sense. There's a couple things there. Number one, downtown D.C., yeah, okay, there was a pandemic. Last time I checked, that hit everybody. So for the downturn in business and so forth that's hit downtown and be blamed 
singularly on just the ubiquitous concept of crime in DC, which don't get me started about how ignorant that sounds. Um, I'm not, I'm like, you. you know what I'm saying? Like there's just larger issues. And the whole point to me of what an owner can be, not necessarily what they have to do, is that, you know, yeah, people trust you for your product. That's something that's entertaining. Therefore, the consistency of said product, at least in terms of play, is important. I mean, you look at how hard Commanders fans are getting the team, getting fighting to get the team back into the city. It's because of A, the nostalgia factor, and B, I think people just connect to whatever that site is more. Potomac Yards is like not a place, bro. Like my buddy used to live out there. We never visited him because it was just weird to get to, and not just because of the metro. It's like, you got to go to the airport and then you got to like be next to that. It's just, it, it, it's actually kind of stunning to me that Ted would even think that anybody would like this at all. The only people defending it are people who are, again, bootlickers for those that have a lot of money. Because even if this were for the right reasons, it would be a stupid move, in my personal opinion. And that's why it's so baffling. It feels like there's a certain level of, I, I don't want to say vengeance, but. You did all that talk about being in a community, all that talk, comparing yourself to Martin Luther King, blah, blah, blah. You can go look that up. You know what I mean? That's a wild comparison. You, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> just like how, if that's how you actually feel, all this breaking out boundary stone courts for the district, hashtags, and then you just threaten to go to Virginia? Like, nah, bro, that's not <laughs> that's not how anything rocks. And it's it's almost, I almost am kind of embarrassed for him because mm -hmm. it's such a naked cash grab that indicates such a level of greed that, People, your fan base can't evaporate. It happens. Yeah. Ask Daniel M. Snyder. People loved that team. People used to go to the place, moved out of town, play started to suck, team started to suck. All of a sudden, they can't fill it to save their lives. Just a bizarre thing to watch unfold in real time if you actually give a shit about basketball in D.C.